सरस्वती कावेरी जीवन कारण मूल तत्व नदी राष्ट्र We've taken one thing that inextricably binds us all, and we've converted that uh, into into a source of conflict, into a source of you know division, and indeed uh, seemingly unending strife. We need not be negative about that. Um, um, as Sadhguru, the uh, inspirational force behind Valley for Rivers and the founder of Isha Foundation points out, there is no problem that cannot be solved with an awakened uh, human intelligence. The vast majority of the intergovernment discussion, the vast majority of the civil society effort and media attention has, has focused only on how to better leverage the existing dwindling supply of water, you know, by way of dams, by way of river linking, uh, or by way of pollution control. So that was the context in which uh, Sadhguru set up and conceived of the Rally for Rivers initiative. And what I would take you through is how he changed the discourse on water in the country in three fundamental ways. So the first one was that virtually no one was talking about the dwindling supply of water, which as you will recognize, makes any task of water sharing agreements that much more difficult. He started talking about how to increase water supply. When that happens, everybody gains. And it's apparent that achieving some kind of agreement and getting opposing forces to align becomes so much easier with a win-win proposition of that kind. The second aspect was that while everybody's quick to talk about the problems on the environment, very few are offering an effective solution. And when I talk about effective, I'm talking about a solution that is both technically robust which is normally what we just stop at, but also, and very importantly, has been conceived of in an insightful and pragmatic way, which takes full cognizance of the inevitable challenges of on-ground implementation. And the third thing was that the another solution was articulated in a sharp and succinct way, which played a key role in aligning all stakeholders. So let me give you an example. The detailed technical recommendations of the Rally for Rivers were captured in a 760-page, no less, document. And yet the headline thought was kept very, very simple. The fact that we need to plant trees on either side of at least one kilometer of the river for the entire length of the this flood plain. And we need to do this in one of two ways. Where you have private farmer land, we want to actually encourage farmers to move to a much more remunerative form of livelihood based on tree-based agriculture. And where you have public lands, we want to actually get the government to do a forestation with endemic and biodiverse species. So, having changed the nature of the discourse in, in those three ways, let me now shift here and talk about the five online principles by which the mass movement was set up in the country of the size of India. The first online principle was that a mammoth program like this, which involved fundamentally planting billions of trees, not millions, billions of trees, cannot be done by any one entity. This requires a full-scale people's movement, which involves, which needs to involve all stakeholders. And therefore, the Rally for Rivers spent a lot of painstaking effort trying to get on board the various national and state governments, the NGOs, the youth, the public at large, and other influences like corporates and media houses. The second important underlying principle is that in a political democracy, with elections every five years, it is very, very difficult for a government to pursue an initiative which involves a very large financial outlay if the beneficial outcomes are going to come a decade or two later. That's the reality of the situation. So the only way we're going to get long-term environmental action going is if we equip the governments with a specific people's mandate to that effect. And that's, that's what Sadhguru did. He appealed to the people for the sake of their children to support a cause that would inevitably span many future governments. He asked them to express their mandate unambiguously by voting for a change. 
for example, through the simple mechanism of sending in a free missed telephone call. Incredibly, 162 million people responded. It's the largest ever environmental reaction, I think, in the history of mankind. The third principle that Sadhguru talked about was that if you're going to pit economics versus ecology, as a lot of the discussion in development often is, in today's world, economics will win. There's no, doubt, there's no doubt about that. And so what we need to do is turn this around a little bit. What we need to do is move economics from being the hindering force to actually being the catalyst which leads to the environmental gain. So how do we do that? So who suggested a very simple mechanism, which was that we shape the intervention in a way in which the incomes of these otherwise impoverished farmers will go five-fold in 10 years. And you can see how that economic impetus and you know, that focus of market will bring the environmental gains to play. The fourth underlying tenet really was that for a problem as complex as this, you need to have an end-to-end -end holistic solution. And that means that you need to get into areas of effort which, on the face of it, may seem unrelated. And let me give you some examples. 80% of the water in Asia is consumed by agriculture. So any part of trying to address the water challenge has to talk about how do we reinvent agriculture with a much lower water footprint. Yeah. That implies a whole host of public policy changes and resultant sub initiatives. So let me give you some examples. We want to move farmers from using water guzzling cash crops to tree based agriculture. We want to move farmers from flood irrigation to micro irrigation. Let me give you another set of examples. We talked about the imperative of improving and dramatically increasing livelihoods as part of this program. That results in a whole host of sub initiatives. For example, we want to actually take these small farmers with very meager land holdings, you know, typically less than one hectare which is one and a half acres, and virtually no selling power, and combine them, aggregate them, into much larger marketing entities. We want to actually get these larger marketing entities into direct contact with end-user industries, and get them into contracts, so that their realization of the farm output prices go up, and the middle end get knocked out. Yeah. And we need to build rural infrastructure through public private partnerships. A third set of examples. We want these ecological gains to be sustainable in the long term which means that we not only need to look at the fundamentals of water, we also need to look at the fundamentals of soil fertility and actually ensure that we're taking steps to improve the organic content of soil and also, in phases, move towards chemical-free agriculture. The fifth principle that I want to talk about, the last one, is really that how do we actually set up a people's movement? It is pertinent to note that in today's world, there's virtually no example of a large-scale environmental movement that has made a significant dent on the original problem, especially in a geography of the size and complexity of India. So how is this done? We can discern four thematic strands, and I'll talk about those in turn. The first was to actually get a robust technical recommendation in place. For that, what we did was we got 20 leading multidisciplinary experts together and over many months, they actually you know, got together and actually worked out a comprehensive set of solutions. With the technical solutions in hand, the stage was then set to saying, how do we mobilize and galvanize the people of the country? That, of course, was possible only because of the leadership of Sadhguru. Underlined importantly by his public stature, his charisma, and his enormous personal energy. So, for example, he personally went from one end of India to the other 9,300 kilometers holding 150 events, public gatherings, in a span of 30 days. And importantly, each of these gatherings was celebratory in nature. There was no finger pointing, and included everybody. I'll give you a specific example. We talked about the 125-year-old Kaveri dispute. So we actually got farmers together from opposing sides of Tamil Nadu and Kanaka on the banks of the contested river, and demonstrated to them that increasing water supply is the only key that's going to unlock the 125-year-old conflict. Because if you want to keep arguing about a cake of size which is dwindling, uh, you won't get nowhere. So while all of this was happening, the other challenge for us was we had to build a human capability which would form the central spine on which this entire movement would be pivoted. 
So we came up with the idea of building a force of dedicated youth volunteers, young adults who are willing to put aside their affiliations or their narrow affiliations to geography, to politics, and actually dedicate themselves to a much larger common cause. And it's incredible, you know, something we let out a call and thousands of uh, young men and young men and women volunteered. The fourth thematic strand was really how do we actually work and shape the government strategy and government uh, policies. And there are two aspects to that. One was we had to actually get the national government to enunciate all the required policy framework changes. You know, related to water, related to agriculture, related to infrastructure, there are a whole host of them. And the second one was that, you know, in the Indian context, the program design and implementation is in the hands of individual states. So we had to work with them. Both of those are now successfully in play. The national government has, has issued an advisory for all the states, enshrining the principles of river revitalization based on the recommendation of the Valley of Rivers. And as far as the states are concerned, you know, we now have memorandums of understanding for large-scale on-ground programs with six different states, those of Karnataka, Maharashtra, Assam, Chhattisgarh, Punjab, and Gujarat. A lot of these principles and ideas you know, are consistent with the tenets of blue peace and, and the matter of survival. We believe that Rally for Rivers, with its fundamentally all-inclusive character, can offer a model of addressing water-related challenges in hotspots around the world. Water is not just a resource to be managed. I mean, water is, is our lifeline. Water is the very stuff of life. It highlights the interconnectedness of all beings and shows us how our blue planet sustains us all. As that kind of awareness begins to creep in, peace is just going to be a natural byproduct. Thank you for your attention and time. Member of the European Parliament, um, we are trying to strike the issue of the sustainable development goals and how to interconnect the goals. Uh, in your presentations, in your work, does that matter? Is that already a part of your wording, a part of your communication? Thank you. There's no such thing as 17 goals. There's one goal. Yeah, you've got to uplift the people, you've got to uplift the planet. Um, and when you actually start looking at the intervention, uh, it was interesting that we could map the actual subcomponents into each of those 17 goals. But the fact was that it was not approached from the point of view, I need to solve this goal. Yeah, it was approached from the point, I need to have a holistic solution which is sustainable. And the moment you define it that way, you know, willy-nilly, you actually end up having to address all the subcomponents which, which are articulated. So, you know, I, I think we're sort of saying that we need to actually make a pitch for saying what is holistic and what's sustainable. Yeah, and, and, and the 17 components that we've got are wonderful milestones and, and a wonderful checklist, but it's not good enough to actually just go down and say, I did one or two. You know, you've got to take the whole lot. Uh, you know, um, and, and you know, our own on-ground initiatives that we're doing, for example, we've, we've just signed off uh, a $200 million uh, program with the government of Maharashtra. Uh, it includes every element. It includes tribal welfare, it includes uh, children, it includes education, it includes uh, uh, water conservation, it includes micro irrigation, it includes soil fertility, it includes uh, any other industry, it includes live hills. Uh, you know, uh, because how you segment it if you want to sort of make a sustainable change on the ground? Um, so uh, I, I think it's a wonderful starting point, but you know, um, we, you know, our pitch is we need to combine all 17 and not just stick with being happy with attacking two, three, four, five out of the 17.